Hi, Jill. Good morning. Good morning. Hello there. Okay, and and so I could go into any of these and open them up now. Okay. Mm, press stop share. Really quick. Okay. Whenever you go to, you have to make sure you have all your documents open before. So well, that's what document? I was trying to do. I, I need yeah. all these open. Okay. So go ahead and open them all. Okay, um, I have the pension ministry lives. Okay. And then <clears throat> minimize, minimize, minimize that. I could say I'm never gonna find them again if I just minimize them. No, because it remember it pops up on that on screen. screen. Okay. Uh, the budget. Mm -hmm. And then you'll minimize that. Yep. And so you have those different tabs open on those PDFs because they open up with the web browser. Okay, all right. And then you're going to exit out of that and share screen. And see, this is where you're going to go because this page right here already has those pages up. For the, for the um, what's it called? I for the PDFs. Okay. Because that's open and explore, so you have all these that you can open. Okay, so I'll open this one and then I'll go to each of those. Yes. Okay. Okay, and then you press stop share. Okay, where was I? I'm back here. Stop. Okay, green. And then 
Are you wanting to share your agenda? Right, first thing, yes. Okay. So share it. Okay, and then you can actually go down here where that little book looking thing is. You click on that and then it's like that. Okay, all right. And then you can actually go to view. Um, paper layout. There you go. All right. Um, so when I'm done with, well, I'm never going to be done with this. I'm going to bounce back to the other ones. If I want to view the other ones, then I go to where? I go stop. to stop the share, and then you'll go to the other document. Okay. Unfortunately, there's no way to like switch back and forth. Four. Yeah, it's okay. kind of weird. Right. Okay. In that. So you Hi, everybody. This is Cassandra. Hi, Cassandra. How are you, Jill? Fine. Good. All right, I'll put myself on mute. Thank you. Okay, we're trying to share documents this time so that people get less confused.
Hello, Mr. Gilla. Yes. Hi, uh, my name is Jill Kaiser. I'm the pension administrator. So Hi, you, will, you will be, oh, Greg is here as well? Yes. Both, okay, great, Both thank the you. The Sawgrass team is here. All right, thank you. Miss Jill. Hey, Brent. Morning. How are you? Good. Okay, everybody's being unmuted. You ready, Miss Jill? I am. All right. Uh, we'll call to order the pension meeting at 10 o'clock. Uh, we'll start with roll call. <clears throat> Chad Bramford? Here. Mark Lenity? Here. Uh, Mr. Berry, you on? Yes, not. Mr. Campbell? Mr. Campbell? Present. Um, uh, Greg with Sawgrass. I'm here. Um, Capital City, Mr. Dwayne. Burgess. Yes, sir. Here. Miss Cassandra. Here. Uh, Miss Jill. Yes, I'm here. Anybody I missed? Um, there is also, now I'm not sure to how, how to say Mr. Gilla's first name. He works with Greg Gosh. Could you introduce Hi, yourself? Hi, good morning, everyone. This is Learden Gita. I'm with Sawgrass. Good morning. It's pronounced Learden. Good morning. Uh, I guess uh, that should be everybody. Uh, did everybody get a chance to approve the minutes from the last meeting? Any questions? Questions on the minutes? I no make motion to approve. Motion to accept by Mr. Campbell. Second. Second by Bramford. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Um, move on to the Sawgrass report. All right. Uh, can everybody hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Because I didn't do the internet and I did the dial in. Is there any feedback? That's good. Sounds good. Okay, perfect. Um, so does everybody have a book or is there a way we can move, move the book on? Uh, I had the report and email. I can look at it that way. Let me see if I can share it with you. Let 
There it is. Can you see it? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I think, I think Greg got muted. Can you turn to page nine? I was getting feedback, so I hit mute on the iPad thinking, because I'm also dialed in, so I'm going to, I'm not going to play with something that's not broke right now. So good morning. Um, for the record, my name is Greg Gosh, Client Service Manager with Sawgrass Asset Management. It's good to not physically be with you. I wish I was. You're only an hour drive away. Um, but, uh, you know, since your last meeting, which was probably going right into the teeth of, of this situation we've, we've, we're hopefully getting out of, uh, it's, it's, been, uh, it's been a crazy ride. You know, and one thing I, I want to talk about, and Leardon's going to get into this uh, a lot deeper than I am, but we're going to keep our meeting, sh our, our presentation short for your meeting. Um, the reason people hire Sawgrass is because, and the people have fixed income period in their pension plans or in their investment strategies, is because when bad things happen and, and the herd mentality sells off and people lose a lot of money and sell, and, and sell into the, these market drops, fixed income is usually where money flows into and it also is more stable and it, it's, uh, it's a bedrock for your, your portfolio for your pension plan. So the way we manage it's in a more conservative way because there's different ways you can do things. You can take on risk and fixed income just like you can in the stock market, but we always are risk conscious. Um, we try and keep the quality of the companies that we own of their debt along with the treasuries and agencies at a very high level, and we also try to get them at what we, at, at what we assess to be good value for what we're paying for our, for, for our securities. That paid off for you, and I think it's paid off the last – couple of years as interest rates have dropped, gone up and then dropped again, um, you have actually had good um, returns for the last couple of years that we hadn't seen in a while. Now yields are continuing to be low and they're going to be dropping and we're almost flirting with negative yield. But if you'll turn with me to page 10, you can see for the quarter, not the year, the quarter, you're up four percent for the year, nine point five one, and and then as we get further down the road, they're kind of uh, normal fixed income numbers, but they're a lot higher than they were. You know, since inception, four point eight six. And by the way, we've been working with you nineteen years. I was thinking about this earlier this morning. You know, two, two, year two thousand was twenty years ago. I am getting old. It's crazy how, how, how time flies. But we've been working with you for 19 years. We appreciate your business. We've seen a lot go on, but um, we're working hard for you on that. So if you look at the one year, up 9.5% in, uh, in this market, um, the index uh, is, is still up 8.93. But you had a lot of risk-taking fixed income managers that, that had – really difficult numbers that had negative numbers uh, for the quarter and especially for the month leading into uh, uh, March of last year. So Sawgrass, there's been no changes in your investment team since I was at, uh, at your last meeting, I think two quarters ago. Um, again, we appreciate your business. We, we, we take a lot of pride in our neighbors that we get to work with like yourself being is down the road from us, and um, if there are any questions for me, I'm going to let Learden go through everything. Hey, this is Burgess. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Uh, you touched on it, but I think it's worth stressing more, and that is it was a difficult bond market, and you guys did very, very well. Uh, you want to put some color on the illiquidity that occurred and what the Federal Reserve did to shore up the market, and, and particularly in March. Yeah. I'm going to let Leard answer that question because he was 
he was personally dealing with that. Yeah. All right. Well, th th thanks, Greg. Uh, good morning, everyone. Learden here, fixed income portfolio manager at Sawgrass. Um, first, I'd like to thank you for your business. We appreciate the opportunity to manage your fixed income portfolio, as Greg mentioned as well. Uh, to answer uh, uh, Burgess' question, uh, first quarter of this year was truly historic. I mean, you know, we saw some incredible moves in the financial markets, um, major dislocations in every asset class within fixed income. And uh, to your point, Burgess, uh, there was a brief period of illiquidity, and that included also the treasury market, which that's the deepest, most liquid market in the world. And that was truly shocking. I, you know, we've never seen anything like that before, where there was essentially no bid for certain parts of the treasury market. And uh, mortgages were struggling for a brief period of time. Uh, corporate bond market was completely uh, frozen. Commercial paper market was completely shut. Uh, a lot of these uh, big companies, they couldn't, they couldn't roll their short-term debts. They couldn't fund their, um, their short-term liabilities to meet the payrolls and pay the operating expenses. So it was a severe crisis unfolding in a very short period of time. And that's when the Federal Reserve... Um, stepped into the market, uh, intervened, they cut the rates uh, to zero very fast, uh, they reinstated the quantitative easing program, uh, basically buying assets outright in the marketplace. And later on, they started with treasuries and mortgages, and so once that market started to improve a little bit, they uh, also included corporate bonds and high yield municipal bonds into that mix. And after that announcement, that was the real game changer because after that announcement, that's when it really started uh, to, uh, to improve. That's when the market started to improve and the sentiment really improved. Uh, so ever since that call, we've essentially had a, a risk on move in financial markets. Uh, and then in addition to that, we got a, a big uh, response from the fiscal policy as well. Um, uh, with the CARES Act and many other programs that were designed to help the economy in this, in this difficult period. Uh, so all that really helped um, improve the overall sentiment in the market, and we've had a, a, a risk on move ever since that call. So essentially, think of the, of the first quarter in two parts. The first part was the crash, the biggest sell-off in equities, the fastest sell-off in equities in history, 36 percent down in, in a matter of 23 days. And then we got that snapback recovery, that, which was driven primarily by the Federal Reserve. Does that answer your question, Burgess? Yes, I, I would ask before you go on if everybody would uh, please mute their mics. There's a lot of uh, sounds like a wrestling match going on in the background. I'll do the same. It'll be easier to understand you. I want to put my my mic on mute. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, is there any other questions on that on that ex on that description there? Um, no, you did a great job. There's a, a tough market, and and I'll, I'll share this with the other members uh, and the guests here. Your your numbers were outstanding uh, in the fixed income space. Thank you. Oh, thanks. So as as Greg mentioned previously. Um, we had a pretty strong absolute return number for the quarter, uh, up 4%, 4 uh, outperforming the benchmark by 87 basis points. And that brings the year up to 9.5%, which is a very strong absolute number for, for a fixed income strategy, uh, outperforming the benchmark by 58. Uh, and so in, in times like these, this is when you really need that high quality style uh, fixed income strategy that brings that diversification for you and protects you in the downside uh, in a, in a, in a risk-off market. Uh, so we just, we have just demonstrated that uh, this quarter in the last year uh, by focusing on strong companies, by focusing on government securities that, that have uh, very, very little credit risk. Uh, so that, that was, that was the strategy to have uh, in, in times like these. Uh, in terms of uh, explaining the drivers of that return, I'm going to just kind of explain it to you in just three brief terms, three brief factors. Uh, which is the interest rate risk, the sector allocation, and the, and the security selection 
For the interest rate risk, we had a neutral position relative to the benchmark, so that wasn't much of a factor. The biggest driver was the sector allocation. So if you turn with me on page 25, This was the largest driver of our excess uh, return, positive excess return. We started the quarter uh, with, a, with a heavy underweight position in corporate bonds. We were underweight by 40. So if you look at that top half of the, of the chart, if you look at that credit risk ratio, that is the, me that is the measure of the total corporate bond risk. Uh, so that 49% means that we were underweight versus the benchmark. So we, we had a very underweight position relative to the benchmark because at the time, corporate bonds were trading at very rich values, especially when you adjusted for the quality and the longer duration features relative to the historical averages. We made the, the case there that uh, the risk reward wasn't favorable and we turned very cautious back then. So that really helped your portfolio uh, on the downside uh, during the first half of, of, the fir of the first quarter. And then as the risk really started selling off, as corporate bonds and every other asset class stock started selling off, and the Fed started inter intervening. And when they made the announcement that they would include corporate bonds into their purchase purchasing asset program, that's when we decided to add a lot of uh, corporate bonds back to your portfolio. So we, uh, we, start, so we went from an underweight position to an overweight position of 116% uh, because at the time the values were really attractive and you had the Fed, and you had the Fed put that, uh, that was um, a, a, an insurance uh, going forward. So those moves were the, the, the biggest drivers uh, of, your, of your return for the quarter. And you can see in the bottom of the half that we moved uh, the corporate bond allocation from uh, low 20s percent to all the way up to 40% for the quarter. So we were fairly active, I would, I would say, for the quarter. Um, and then lastly, the last factor, the security selection, if you turn with me on page 28, Uh, this is the current holdings of your portfolio, and you can see that our focus on, on, on strong companies with strong fundamentals, as is illustrated here in our proprietary model, which it shows that all these uh, issuers have a high fundamental score, meaning strong, strong balance sheets. That was also a big help in this, in this uh, volatile market. Uh, uh, high quality companies, strong balance sheet companies really helped uh, with, with the return as well. So I would say... The interest rate risk was neutral, sector allocation was very positive, and, and the focus on strong companies was also very positive. Uh, looking at the portfolio as of the quarter end, in terms of the current position on page, if you turn on page, uh, let me see here, uh, page 32. As at the quarter end, your portfolio has got a higher yielding uh, characteristics versus the benchmark with roughly the same interest rate risk and the quality, uh, I would say is slightly comparable uh, with an overweight position now in corporate bonds and we turn overweight in mortgages uh, for the, the extra, extra income that that asset class provides. And we have turned uh, heavy underweight in treasuries uh, right now. So that is the current positioning one more page I wanted to illustrate to you um, on page 36. We've done this, we've gone back and done this study of um, and illustrated how we outperform in different phases of the market cycle. You know, Greg mentioned our, uh, our, rela our historical relationship with, your, with you guys and we really appreciate it. So here, if you look at the different parts of the market. So for example, in that first part of the market cycle were if you remember back in the 2014 and 2015, the Federal Reserve was essentially on, on hold in, at following that zero rate policy, trying to help the economy. So in that period, we managed to outperform the benchmark. And then in the second phase, uh, starting in 2016, all the way to 2018, when the Federal Reserve started hiking the rates as the economy started getting hot, uh, trying to cool and, and, and maintain the inflation expectations, uh, so for that period, we still managed to outperform the benchmark. And then the next phase, when the Federal Reserve went on pause as the economy started cooling off, we still managed to outperform the benchmark. 
And then finally, in the, la in the last phase, when we got the market crash, um, corporate bonds spreads, uh, the yield, the extra yield uh, uh, over treasuries, that measure blowing up and stocks selling off and the Federal Reserve uh, going back to zero and reinstating the quantitative easing pr uh, program. Even, even in that phase, we still managed to outperform the benchmark. So it just goes to show, it's just, it's an another illustration of how, uh, of, of our dynamic approach and, and how, how we pay attention to risk management and, 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 and manage to still provide a positive excess return in a very risk controlled way. So with that, I will, I will conclude my brief presentation and I'll take any questions if you have any. This is Burgess again. Uh, uh, you, I think the two most important things I've heard uh, so far today from you um, is really the, the, the two pivots you did. The pivot uh, before the, the sell-off uh, of the credits where you were underweighted in credits and overweighted in governments. And then the recent uh, pivot back to credits because of the attractive yields. Any comment on that? That would be a good summary. Okay, good. Good job. Thank you. Any other questions? Discussion? Thank you. Thank you. Hey, I'll make a motion to accept the report from Burgess. I'll second it. That was a motion from Sawgrass, not Burgess. Yeah, that's my mistake. Motion made by Bramford, seconded by Lenity. All in favor? Aye. Motion passed. Capital City is here. All right. Um, we will move on to Capital City. Mr. Duane. Okay. Good morning. I uh, apologize for the technical difficulty, uh, but I'm here at the and I'm uh, glad to report that equities are doing much better than they, than, than they were on March 31st. Uh, if you have the report in front of you, there we go. Um, and if you can page to the asset allocation policy page, there we go. Uh, you'll see that I've been keeping large cap equities overweight, the largest it's ever been. And that's because in the large cap area, there are a lot of very healthy and stable technology companies that were not as affected by the virus as others. So an overweighted large cap US the expense of being overweight, international, small cap, and mid cap, and REIT. And so I place my bets on companies like Amazon and Google, Walmart, and Target, and healthcare companies like Johnson & Johnson that are inventing a vaccine. So uh, today that is still working. I did put 1% to work in mid-March and 1% to work last week after the 5% pullback. So I put about $150,000 to work in the past three months and that's worked well. Um, bonds have come up to be about, um, if you include high yield, um, equal to the policy of 30%. So um, you know, things are getting better. Um, I know that it's kind of disappointing, but May has been a terrific month where your fund was up 5% in the month of May alone, which is terrific. Um, because of low interest rates, it, it's tending to push money into the market because money cannot earn anything on the sidelines because it's pretty much earning zero. So you're seeing money looking for a, a place to, to land and it's, it's headed for technology. Um, and any, any company that can show promising growth. Um, so is there any uh, questions on the asset allocation uh, uh, stance? 
If not, we can page over to the performance. Page down, please. Um, if you look at performance, there we go. Uh, you'll see that year to date, of course, things were not good. That looking back in March, the uh, equity side was down 20%. Uh, 22%. The, the total fund was down 20.44%. Um, the bonds were down 12. That's because your convertible bonds and high yield bonds tend to act like equities. So they did not do well. They don't do well in a down market, uh, but they do real well in an up market. Uh, real estate was down 24% because of the fear that tenants could not pay rent. Uh, that is starting to go away and REITs are making a comeback. It's very... Uh, very encouraging. Um, and so if you look at the last one year, the total fund return um, uh, fell 10.67. And then each of the last three and each of the last five, you see very low numbers. Um, so not, not a great first quarter, obviously, because of the virus and some of the comments that were made earlier. Uh, but if you want to page down, please, to the next performance, we look at April, um, things changed uh, a lot. Um, equities came back about 10% in the month of April alone. The total fund brought back also about 10%. Um, REITs started to come back about 7%. Bonds came back uh, about 8%. So a lot of improvement in April. And of course, I don't have May's results um, handy to show you, but May is a terrific month. So we're getting back to normal slowly. But uh, the fourth quarter of this year is expected to be terrific in terms of economic growth. Um, and next year, um, people, certain economists are talking about a 5% GDP growth rate, which would be fantastic. So we're clawing our way back. Uh, we're not there yet. There's still some uncertainty out there. I'm looking to put money to work on pullbacks, and I'm sure that there will be some as um, the economy opens up and there's threats of, uh, of second uh, early infections in certain cities. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, there's vaccines on the way. Uh, uh, maybe in September, they'll be out there, and that would make the market feel a lot better. Um, um, that, any questions on the performance? We can go to the asset allocation. Your page down, please, Jill or whomever. There we go. So May 29th, this is as of May 29th, total, uh, Market value is $7,383,528. Um, significantly better than April. Um, we're 56% in equity, which is a balance, slightly moderately aggressive uh, portfolio where it is still in a growth mode. 36% in fixed income, that, that's counting the convertibles and the uh, high yield. Cash is down to 271,000 and probably will go down a little more. And real estate is at 2.9%. It's yielding 4%. Haven't seen real estate yield 4% in a while. So um, not too aggressive, um, nowhere near the cap, but uh, we'll be moving it up a little bit in the next six weeks, I'm sure. Um, any questions on the asset allocation? If not, that concludes my uh, comments. The rest of the report is the custodian's report with the bonds and uh, the mutual funds. So I'll just uh, stop there and see if there's any questions. Uh, we're, we're making progress. I'll make a motion to accept the report. Second. Motion made by Bramford to accept the Capital City report. I second it. Second by Lindy. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Uh, next up on the list will be uh, Mr. Burgess. 
Okay, good morning, everyone. Um, you know, I just saw something come over the uh, the wire here while I was listening to these great reports, at least the details of the reports, that said that 40% of the folks who are dying from COVID are in nursing homes, 40%. And just as a takeaway, you know, the big untold story is why are so many of the elderly not protected better? And maybe that'll come out of this at some point. Um, Jill, can you put up the, um, the BCA report, please? I'm looking for it, but I'm not sure I see it. That's okay. Uh, we'll wing it. Okay. That's, uh, that's all right. What I'd like to do is, is, um, is start from where we are right now in terms of performance and then kind of go backwards. Uh, Dwayne mentioned that uh, April was, it was a nice month for you and we do have the main numbers. It looks like you're up about 13% in, in the April, May period, which brings your fiscal year to date return, fiscal year to date. That's what Patrick looks at from October 1 of last year through the end of May, we're right around 2.2% positive. Uh, we had uh, just a week ago, your numbers were up close to 5%. And we had, a, we had a little bit of volatility last week, which kind of pulled things back down again. But I'm comfortable in saying that it's quite likely that by the end of June, you will be at around 5% positive fiscal year to date. And uh, if that holds, if people become more comfortable with the um, economy and with getting outdoors and doing getting back to normal, you could very well see things come back to uh, a positive actuarial experience. It's very possible. And the reason I say that is because the, the amount of stimulation injected into the economy uh, that began in March uh, is finally starting to sink into the stabilization of both the credit markets and of course the extra money people have gotten who were, uh, who were out of work to stabilize things. All right, do you all have a copy of the BCA report in your emails? I don't. I don't believe I, I, I received them by email, Burgess. Hey, you sent it to me, I have it. I, I uh, did? I, yeah, because okay. I have a copy of your email where you distributed it to everybody. Oh, okay. So, um, did, is there anybody in the audience who does not have our report? I guess that means everyone has it. Yeah. Um, would anyone like Jill to resend it? Miss Jill, you need me to resend it to you? I, I probably have it in my emails, but I can't get to it right now. Um, okay. To put it up. I'm looking for mine. Hi, this is, this is Cassandra. If somebody could forward it over to my email. That would be great. Just I it's okay. It's okay. Look, I'll just go to page five in, in my report uh, for those of you who have it and kind of hit on some of the high points. Uh, for the quarter, the, the program was had a negative return of 14.2%. Uh, uh, that was similar to the, uh, the model, which was down 15.2, because we all know that was equity related. And the majority, much of that is already recovered as we speak. The big star really for the quarter was Sawgrass. I talked about that a little bit earlier. Uh, they were up about 4% uh, for the quarter. And a number of their peers had negative returns for the quarter. Some of them were down 1.2%. So they did a great job for you in on holding the line when they, they really needed to. I got you caught up on fiscal year to date, up around two and a half percent. 
and possibly getting to four, uh, positive five by the end of the month. Uh, a couple other notables uh, from a defensive standpoint, uh, the um, the infrastructure program at Cone and Pierce did much better than, than the S&P 500 in terms of during the downturn, protected you 25% better. And the uh, convertible bonds were only down 13.4% versus almost 20 for the S&P. So there was another big 30% uh, protection there on the downside. I guess I'll just wrap it up just by saying, I think Boyne's doing a great job. He's, he's nibbling back into the market and um, keep, up, keep up the good work, Dwayne. That's all I have. Any questions for Burgess? Questions, discussion? I make motion to accept this report. Motion by Lenny to accept the Burgess Chambers report. I'll second. Second by Bramford, all in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm not hearing any nay, any nays. Motion pass. Next up on the list will be uh, Miss Harvey. Good morning, everybody. Can everyone hear me? Yes, ma'am. Wonderful. Um, the first item on the agenda is the IRS ordinance um, that was tabled from the last meeting. Uh, if you recall, um, effective January 1, 2020, there was a change to the required minimum distribution age. Uh, from 70 and a half to age 72. So um, in order to bring your ordinance up to date, we went ahead and drafted this IRS ordinance. That part of the ordinance uh, is mandatory because it just reflects the changes of the Internal Revenue Code. Um, there is a discretionary piece that was added um, that we are adding to all of our uh, plans. And that would be First one under section 2, 231, retirement plan purpose, name, and effective date. What we did was um, added a new subsection B that allows, or is asking the city to allow the pension plan rather than going through um, official, going through an, an ordinance change, but to use a policy change um, whenever there is a change in the IRS ordinance or the IRS code to uh, change the bulletin's policy. So essentially it would give the board through a policy um, the ability to uh, just update the plan for any changes to the IRS code and um, it would have the same effect uh, as law. We, if the board is okay with that, we would go ahead and draft a policy. Nothing's been drafted yet, um, but the next step would be to draft such a policy, uh, bring it to the board at a, at a future meeting for discussion and approval. Are there any questions on the proposed ordinance? That just allows business, I'm sorry, this is Chad. Does this just allow business to flip a little easier for us, ma'am? Yes, the discretionary piece does, yes. One that allows the board to adopt a policy whenever there's an IRS change. Yeah, I'd say we go ahead and do it. I mean, we can't do anything against what the IRS changes, so. Correct. Yeah, it makes sense to me. Are there any other questions? If there are no other, uh, if there are no other questions, then a motion would be in order to, um, to approve the ordinance as written, and then I will work with uh, Ms. Jill in order to get it before the commission. Uh, Chad will make them. Motion made by Bramford to approve the ordinance and for you to work with Ms. Jill on uh, uh, policy. 
Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second it. Second by Myers. All in favor? Aye. 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 Not hearing any nays. Motion passed. Next. The next item is the cyber insurance follow-up. Um, I sent out an email, which I think Jill forwarded to all the trustees. That was a follow-up to um, our discussion at the last meeting. Did everybody have a chance to review it? So essentially, uh, the last meeting, the three boards were uh, asking that to go back to the commission to see if the commission would allow the city to increase its cyber insurance coverage in order to properly cover the pension boards in, in the uh, instance that there was a cyber attack. Um, and, and Jill, has there been any follow up with that? Um, right now, uh, the uh, Deborah, who is the HR director, has been tasked by the um, city manager to follow up on the city getting an additional $1 million worth of coverage and whether the uh, boards could be covered. From the latest email that she got from the Florida League of Cities where the city has their cyber coverage, the pension boards would be able to be covered under the policy. And now the next step is for the um, Deborah, the HR director to bring it to the commission along with the city manager and see if they'll agree to this. Okay. Um, does the board have any questions about waiting before for it to go before commission or about getting its own policy or, or any further cyber insurance questions from where we are right now? I guess my question is, I mean, I don't, I, it's been since the beginning. I don't know. I mean, is this from a legal standpoint or from, I guess, your advice? I mean, is, is it needed? Is it not needed? I mean, we've, we've heard from Burgess. We've heard from Capital City. They all have, they all have the insurance. So if we're covered by them. Do we need it? I, I guess that's just a question that's been going back and forth. So I think that, and it's, it's a great question. I think the best course of action at this uh, juncture would be to let it go before commission uh, and see if commission will increase their cyber insurance coverage uh, to the, an extra $1 million and have the boards covered under the city policy. If the city won't do that, then we can readdress it. Um, and, and I think we should see what the city will do. And Ms. Jill, if the city adds an extra $1 million, I don't know what our policy is now and we are covered. Does that cover our, our, our fund? Right. It would. The idea is to get an extra one million dollars on top of the million dollars they currently have for cyber liability. So it'd be a two million dollar policy, and it would cover the city as well as all pensions. Now I believe they're going to come back and ask uh, the pensions to uh, contribute to the cost of this extra million dollars. Um, but we'll have to wait and see if that's their decision. Do we feel like that's going to be enough to cover the fund the way it should be covered? Well, originally, go ahead, Cassandra. Okay. Originally, the Cassandra had suggested that there's a five million dollar policy. However, after a lot of discussion through the different boards, it was kind of well, a two million at least policy was kind of juggled around by the different boards who, had, who are deciding on this issue. Um, so that's why that $2 million, um, the police pension board um, made a motion to uh, uh, ask the city to increase their policy to 2 million. And that's where we're standing right now. I understand. So what's your thoughts on that, Ms. Cassandra? So I would like to go through the, the three um, boards to see how much 
Janice, I'm sorry, I didn't have an opportunity to look through um, the reports to see how much money is in each plan and how many participants um, are, are covered because that is their best indicator of the amount of coverage that would be appropriate. Um, that's, that's where we stand with that. I mean, an additional $1 million would be great, um, but as Jill mentioned, the $5 million is, is recommended, especially since it's covering three plans in total, not just one plan. Burgess, did you have a comment? I did. I think it's important for everyone to understand um, where the risk is. And let me throw this question out. Is anybody um, aware of any pension funds that have been uh, held up by some nefarious groups to, where the money from the pension funds have been stolen or taken out in, in any fashion? Is anybody aware of that? I am not. We know that cities uh, we know that cities have been held hostage and had, where they're um, basically been told, if you don't give us money, we're going to shut down your ability to, to send out bills and collect bills and make bank deposits and that kind of thing. Essentially shutting down the operating uh, ability of cities. Does that sound right to you all in the background? Yes, Bridget, that's what, that's what I'm aware of. Yeah, and I think, and I think, let's, let's go over this. The most, to me, the city is the most at risk here. If somebody were to extort money from the city of Palatka, the city of Palatka is your guarantor of the pension plans, all three of them. They're the entity that has to come up with money every year as determined by the actuary. And if the city gets wiped out financially because of, uh, of a theft, uh, then it puts the three pension funds at risk. And I think that's where the, I think that's where the risk is. And does this, and then that leads to this question, what steps has the city taken to protect its, its interests in terms of, um, you know, IT department and protocols, procedures, and all that kind of stuff. Has the city done its job in protecting its interests in the three pension plans? Something to think about. That was kind of my question on it was, I mean, all of our investments is held through Capital City, all grass. So, I mean, that's why I was wondering how much we needed because like, like Burgess just said, I mean, the city's contributing, contributing you know, X number of dollars, but the rest of the money is, it's, I mean, it's not being held by the city. Correct? Yeah, just, just for clarification, the, the sawgrass money uh, is actually held by the bank. Cap Cities actually holds sawgrass, the bonds that sawgrass manages, it's all at the bank. With that information, I think the $1 million, if the, if the city would increase its policy by $1 million to cover the pension board, I think that would be sufficient to cover um, to cover the board. Because as you mentioned, the money is held by the bank, the, the third party, which has its own cyber insurance policy. Um, so the $1 million by the city would, uh, I think, would be a good, a good number. I agree. I think we kind of almost need to wait and see what the city's going to do. I mean, Miss Jill, I mean, what you have up on the screen right now says one million for nine hundred and fifty dollars. I mean, if if they wanted us to share that, you're talking about dividing that nine fifty by probably what three boards? Yes. Yes. So I don't think that we we kind of table this and see what the city comes back on as far as. Well, what they're going to do on their part. I 
I guess my only question is, are we at some sort of risk that we need to, do we need to make a move on this now or wait on them? How long will the city take to make a, to make a move? Do we have any notion? I had it on the agenda uh, in April, um, but then it got taken off until more information could be found by the HR director, um, who is now the, uh, also the, um, insurance she handles all insurance so she is going to be getting it on the next um commission meeting agenda i'm told so it's it's really uh, it's taken a year for this kind of cyber insurance questions to really get fully understood uh, by our pension boards. So I think it'll probably take more than one meeting before it will get passed um, at the uh, commission level. But I would say within the next month, it should be decided. I mean, as of right now, the city's already made their contribution for this fiscal year to the pension board, right? Uh, the, the city contributes monthly um, based on the salaries. It, it contributes its, its um, money to the pension monthly, but um, the, if it's being reimbursed by the pensions, there's no cost to the city of increasing uh, their policy immediately. All right. I don't think there's any problem waiting um, a month before we find out what commission will do. I agree. If it was, if it's, I agree. I think we should table it till the next meeting and see what the city comes up with. Okay. If we want to go ahead and table it to the next meeting, then um, we can move on to the next item agenda or agenda item. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, the next one, I think we should have follow up for um, last meeting about the CARES Act. Um, there was one uh, comment that Corona, uh, there's a hundred thousand dollar distribution made for coronavirus related um, payments would be uh, the ten percent penalty for early distribution would be waived. And Ms. Jill has asked a, a great question. Uh, well. What types of distribution does that cover? So uh, that would cover if there is an individual or member who separated service and took a refund of his or her contributions and used that money uh, for a coronavirus related uh, payment. That would that distribution would be um, would be the ten percent penalty would be waived. And then the second one would be uh, drop money. If any drop money was distributed and used for a coronavirus related distribution, again, it's up to $100,000 uh, for the calendar year. Uh, I went ahead and sent uh, Ms. Jill a certification and, and the form that the member individual fills out um, when there is a distribution made. And it's just a self certification that says, hey, this money is being used for a coronavirus related uh, distribution. Are there any other questions about that? No, Jill, have you had any distributions or any coronavirus related um, payments that you're aware of? No. no. Okay. All right, that was really just a follow up for informational purposes. Um, if there are no questions, I think that concludes the attorney's report for today. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you. Next on the agenda is the budget and expenses. I have put together the budget for fiscal year 2020, 2021. Um, it, because 
I'm trying to get in line with the uh, budget. This is budgeting time for the city as well. So if we're on the same budget schedule, um, it works better for them to know what they're going to have to be paying um, for and what what's their costs um, because they do pay for the um, plan administrator, which is on there for $7,000. But these are estimates of the different um, expenses that will probably be happening in um, fiscal year 2021. Um, I've grouped them by category over on the right too, so you can see what the investment expenses are versus the administrative expenses. Um, and that I still have in the budget schooling for three trustees, one conference. in hopes that we'll be going to conferences again. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. Yeah, this is Burgess. The only thing I'd comment on is um, it says monitoring BCI, but it's actually BCA. Um, it. It's just a typo. Someone may be confused about BCI. Sure. Any other questions or comments? Miss Jill, this is Chad. Yes. Who would be the third trustee, ma'am, that will will go to conference? Well, it might be me. Um, but it could, you know, if I can go to the conference as a general fund or with the um, police pension, it's whoever it doesn't have a third that particular conference time. Um, but any three of the five trustees could go. And if there's, you know, if you're going every other year, um, that gives uh, enough money. I am also estimating because hotels can be higher in if it happens in Fort Lauderdale versus in, say, Tallahassee. Um, so there's some wiggle room in there as far as uh, how much it, it you might not spend all 2,500, especially if COVID continues, we won't be spending it at all. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Sure. I'll make a motion to uh, set the reports and close the meeting if nobody's got anything else. I second it. Motion made by Bramford to accept the fiscal year 2021 budget. Seconded by Lindy. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any nays? None heard. Motion passed. Uh, next would be the expenditures. Any questions? None heard. I will make a motion to accept this report also. Motion by Bramford. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays? None heard. Motion passed. Uh, Ms. Jill, we have any public comments? I'm going to go check with uh, the people who are watching the YouTube live. Hold on one moment. Yes, ma'am.
There are no public comments. No public comments. Any other business? None heard. That is the last agenda item. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn by Campbell. Second. Second by Branford. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you everybody. Stay safe. Be careful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.